Hello, my name is Sally Pinto, and I'm the program director for the Yonkers NORC Neighborhood Naturally Occurring Retirement Community. We serve seniors 60 plus in Northeast Yonkers. We are under the auspices of WJCS and the Yonkers Office for the Aging. We also have a resource specialist and a nurse on staff. We conduct virtual programming when partnership with the Yonkers Public Library on a daily basis. Enjoy the program. I learned about the thistle by a librarian on Saturday when I did this in a workshop there with paint was the thistle is the Scottish symbol of bravery and the Scottish soldiers used to knowing that they would be snuck up on by the um, adversarial army would leave thistle along the fields where they were resting at night because they knew that the army, the adversaries would be picking off their shoes to try to sneak up on them. And then the thistle, which has these sharp needles would poke you know, their bottom of their feet and make them cry out and they couldn't sneak up. And I love that. Um, but two other things, the colors, they're not by accident here, purple. Purple is uh, represents justice and dignity. And that's, I think, um, very perfect for Women's History Month. And then the green is uh, hope, which I love. The green is my favorite color. And I think it, you know, it's a great symbol of spring too, hope for warmer weather. And then white, which I put minimally, it represents purity, which is, you know, kind of controversial, I guess. Women don't have to be pure, <laughs> but I like that idea. There's other, you know, symbolic meanings to purity, I suppose. So that's the background for our painting. And it's in the style as, as um, Z so, you know, articulately uh, said it, because a couple of people thought that this was a Georgia O'Keeffe painting. It's not. I paint, it's an original painting that I created based on, inspired by her style of work. You know, her close-ups of flowers, her shading, et cetera. Um, and really the, good. <laughs> oh, well, I'm, I, I paint. So if I can, if I can't, you know, pay homage to one of the great American women painters. Um, and my, my work is also very botanical. I love things that grow. Um, so with that, Z, do you want me to start? That would be lovely. Yeah. Okay, so you could either draw this freehand, which I encourage, um, because it's a small enough that you're using a nine by 12 paper. It's, um, it won't take, you can continue it on your own, of course, but I did have Z send out a template that you could use as well. And the trick for using this template, I mean, if you have carbon paper, <laughs> you can use carbon paper, put it in the back and trace it. But a trick that I do, um, with your oil pastels, and I started that here, you just coat the back of it with oil pastel. Okay, and I'm just gonna quickly finish it. And I always use blue, light blue, um, sometimes like a beige or deep yellow. Um, when I do my initial drawing, just because light blue is really easy to cover. So if you wanna do this along with me, just go ahead and coat the back of your uh, template if you printed it with oil pastel. It doesn't have to be fully 100% coated. You don't have to um, press so hard that you know you hurt your hands. You're just giving it a light coating so that when you use this to transfer to your paper with pen, it gives an impression of what you have coated on the back. So I'm just gonna do this really quickly because I'm actually gonna draw most of mine in. So just to show you, so I've coated the back of it. I'm going to place that on my drawing pad. You can tape it up. Yours is going to be laying flat. Mine's vertical, so you could see it. And I'll move this at this point so you could see me working. And I just use a ballpoint ball pen, use a colored pencil, and I'm just going to press to transfer. And I'm going to bring my monitor close so you could see, because you probably won't be able to see it. And this is just so you get your basic shapes. You have the thistle part of the flower. You have the spiky bulb that the thistle grows from. And my favorite is the leaf. I just love it. I love thistle leaves. And I'm really quickly tracing that out. You can do this 
at a slower pace. But if you were to see me do this slowly, I wouldn't get to the fun part, which is the color. And I am also going to mostly draw mine in because this is, I think, yeah, this is the fourth time I'm doing this. <laughs> so I could probably do it with my eyes closed at this point. Um, and this is just so I don't want you to feel intimidated by having to draw this out. Although it's a fairly simple shape and you don't have to make it exact. <clears throat> You can improvise and do less of these bulbous leaves that kind of will remind me of an artichoke. And I believe it's the same family. I have to actually, I'm pretty sure it's the same family as the artichoke plant, which is why this is that same kind of feeling as artichoke, which is one of my favorite things to eat also, even though it's, the hearts are kind of more meaty, but it's those leaves, there's such little yield on those leaves. All right, I'm nearly done. And I'm gonna go ahead and draw by hand most of that just to, there's a stem here. I'm getting the stem in. Okay. So <clears throat> I'm just gonna go really close because you're not gonna see much. And yours is also gonna be darker because you're pressing, I don't know if you could see it. Can you see any of the blue lines very faintly? They're there. I'm also blocking the light. Let me see if I can get it this way. All right, again, you're gonna be pressing harder and on a horizontal surface. So you will get more of an impression, but I'm gonna go ahead and I'll use a yellow and ochre and then I will make my, lead, my lines more solid. <clears throat> and that's what we'll use to add our beautiful colors. I'm starting with the leaf because it's in the background. I always go back to front. It's just a kind of an organized way to do this. And I tell my students, I teach at Fordham, um, no, sorry, I went to Fordham. I teach at um, Murray Regina in Hartsdale, high school students. And negative space, when you look at the negative space, in this case, it's the purple background. And if you draw a negative space, your positive space pops right out. Your positive objects pop right out. So a lot of times I rely on just the, the space around an object to draw the object. And then it looks like the object I'm trying to draw. The thistle part, you don't have to be exact with that because we're gonna do most of that with just oil pastel but you can block it off so you see where it is. And then this is like the artichokey part. <clears throat> you can draw along with me if you're doing this by hand or continue transferring. Excuse me. With your template. One of my favorite things to use is oil pastel because I, uh, if you've taken one of my classes before, I always say it and so I'm gonna say until I'm blue in my face, oil pastel is just very forgiving. You can make a mistake <clears throat> and cover up your mistake with oil pastel. Whereas watercolor, if you make a mistake, you kind of make it work for you. It's harder to cover it up. So I'm doing this as a combination of what I pressed in and just mimicking my example. So it's a combination of observational drawing and using my template.
um, the template is smaller than my nine by 12. I am just drawing it as if my template was nine by 12. It doesn't matter. I'm extending my stem, making it longer. Almost done. Here's the leaf, lovely artichoke leaf, thistle leaf. I got artichoke on the brain. And this, the um, veins of it, I'm going to do those later. I'll just slightly. Okay. So I'll close, get in close here again so you can see what I've done. This will be making this darker. Okay. I want to block my light. All right. So that's my, <clears throat> you know, my basics for basis for what I'm going to start adding color to. So does anybody have any questions at this point? Everybody drawing this freehand, anybody using the template? And is it working out for you? The one thing I wanna say is if you do have a question in the chat, I won't be able to see it because I'll be, my head's mostly turned this way. So feel free to just shout it on out so that I could stop doing what I'm doing and just address the question. Okay, so next up, color, the fun part. So because I want to, you know, the Colors of Ameri American Women's History Month, International Women's History Month, were chosen as um, purple, white, and green. So I have purple on this side, purple and this thistle, and a little bit of white over here. And then I use a little bit of the yellowish color, creamy yellow, because I didn't want the white to be too bright and too stark. So I'm just going to start with my colors of um, purple. Then you use whatever green you want. You can use a combination of greens. I'm going to use a green, I'm going to have white ready, and then a yellow. Just to tone down that white a little bit. And then you just start coloring. Literally, this is just coloring. The one thing I'm going to do here, though, and with oil pastel, it's all about layering. Um, and then just get a lot of, a lot of area covered quickly because you're going to go back and layer. Um, covering this quickly does two things. It makes you feel like you've accomplished something by covering a lot of you know, surface of your paper. And it makes the surface receptive to the next layer, as opposed to just trying to work this layer until it's the color that you want. I know that I want purple mostly on the right side, so I'm putting that in really quickly. And there's a lot of blending involved too. So I'm gonna start with my dark purple and I have dark purple here too. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that over there. And what that does too is you have purple here, purple along here, it creates unity and also movement. It makes sure I move around and see that there's, and balance, it balances the color out. So that was the placement of that was chosen for that reason. So I've got purple here in the bottom, purple at the top, purple on the flower, the thistle part of the flower. Another piece of tape here. So that's the darkest parts of it for the purple. And here it starts, I have it here with paint, but we can do the same thing with oil pastel. The way we do the blend, still doing purple, but lighter touch so that I can blend that into the lighter color I put there. 
And this is called ombre when we do it this way, going from light to dark or light or dark to light, transitioning color. It's ombre, so we'll do it with their hair. I guess it's in nails and clothing, ombre, French term. Um, when here where I pressed harder, here I'm pressing softer because I'm gonna be blending it. And again, it's all layering. So whatever I started with here can easily, easily be adjusted. Now I'm going to use white to blend that. And this is my favorite part. Using oil pastel is the blending. Right on top, and you can press a little harder. Whenever you use lighter on darker, you can press harder and it blends. And you can hear it. You can literally hear me doing it. Blending this. And that's about how you get that ombre. Or blending, you don't have to call it ombre. And my motion, my stroke is sort of following the shape that I'm coloring around. I don't like using vertical or horizontal unless I'm doing something geometric and there's nothing geometric about this at all. It's all organic. So my strokes are all gonna be organic. You kind of get that, it almost looks like oil painting and that painterly effect of, you know, that nice brushy kind of feeling. And oil pastels, you know, or it's a convenient way to get the same kind of effect as oil paint. It's oil paint mixed with the um, oil mixed with a pigment, the powdery pigment, and then they're set into molds and then they harden. They don't really necessarily dry, they harden, they cure. And then we have oil pastel. So now I'm gonna put some light yellow here. Again, just like I did with the purple, lightly first, and I might put some more purple. This is all about what your preference is and how you like it. And I'm just stumbling it, another technical term here. And then I'm gonna mix the <clears throat> white right on top of it. Or you can leave it white. I never really leave pure white just looks like something's been empty. Even when I do snow, I use touches of um, blue, purple, sometimes even green. Put a little bit more purple here. It's all about mixing. Uh, another thing I tell my students, if you like to bake, and some of them do like to bake, this is putting the ingredients in a bowl, and then using my white is whisking it. And I literally am kind of whisking it. I'm not using a heavy wooden spoon, I'm just using a whisk. So if any of you like to bake or cook or anything else that needs a whisk, you know what I'm talking about here, you're whisking it. Another reason for putting this yellow light, yellowish white background there is because I'm gonna have the purple thistle there and I wanna have that contrast. I want the thistle to really pop out. So that's why I'm having a light background there. Whereas a purple here works because it's a green leaf. All right, so my background is nearly done. I'm just gonna deepen my purples and then start doing my thistle because that's next in the background. And then my leaf and then this artichokey part. But the purple, you can use a pink, you can use a blue, just a lighter color to actually mix it. And I also often use what's the opposite color of purple is yellow. So I'm using that yellow gold color that I used when I started to just another ingredient, a seasoning, call it that, like a paprika or turmeric. And I'm going to whisk that with. Purple, actually, if you want to use a lighter purple or pink, you could something like this. I don't know what I have a 36 color set, so I'm using um, taking advantage of that. So now I'm using this lighter purple as my whisk, 
pulling it on this side because I'm doing that ombre and lightly mixing that into there. I can go back and use white and mix that some more if I wanted. After like everything else is done. <clears throat> my original purple and do my final mix here. And you really want to cover your, you don't want this white speckly finish. That's more of what you do with crayons. With oil pastel, you cover the paper. You don't want that heavy texture. The only thing that you want giving texture is the oil pastel, not that heavy paper surface. See, I'm ombreing this a bit over here so that it blends out. It's such a satisfying feeling watching it blend out. It's also satisfying doing this with oil paint, which is my favorite medium, because if you were to do this with acrylic paint, it would not, it would dry and wouldn't blend easily. You can do this with oil pastel because oil pastel, it's like oil paint. And you can continue blending it days after you've started working with it. Going really dark at the um, corners. Good workout for your muscles here. I'm gonna put some of that same ochre color here again season this a little bit i never use colors straight out of the package i always mix the only thing you really can't do that with and it's my least favorite medium it's marker marker i mean you could put color on top of it but if you anybody has used marker kind of soaked into the paper and all the strokes are visible some people love marker. I have a couple of students who love using marker. And I, they're much more adept at it than I am just because I don't like marker. I like to be able to blend and play with color. You can't really do that so much with marker. All right, so my background's pretty much done. I would probably go back and do some fin you know, finessing afterwards. But for the purposes of this, it's done. Just going to do a little more blending there. Use white. Blend that out a little bit. A smaller whisk if you going back to the baking analogy. So next I'm going to do the thistle and you're going to pick up if you have more than one color purple, you can use them, use that ochre again. And I just do it here it is. You can even use green for here, the darker areas. It's all up to you, but it's the same process now. We're going to cover a lot of it first. And the way to get that thistle point, it's not to do each individual one painstakingly. You sort of just draw it and lift up your oil pastel so that it makes these sharp points. And that's similar to if you were painting, you start at the bottom and you're gonna clean all that up and you lift up your points so that you get these nice sharp thistles, which poked the enemies of the Scottish army soles of their feet, these thistles. That's what we're after here. Okay, so when it, this whole motion is just crisp and sharp and upward. Okay, now I can go and color. But when I'm coloring the area behind these spiky leaves, I'm still going upward because the thistle is, that's how it grows, going upward. Kind of following the direction of the other thistle needles or thistles, thistle needles. Okay. And fill all that for the most part, put the white area in. You've got your background here. 
And this whole body, inside body, is the vessel. The vessel flower. So let's go off the paper. Okay, and then I would use my dark purple. You can use green. Why would I use green? Because green is in the leaves. Sort of, um, um, my, my dad, when I was in college and, and started taking art, and I did a painting of a red chair in green, on a green grassy background. And the red chair was red and the green grassy grass was green. And he said, you always have to put some of the opposite colors in the object you're painting and vice versa. So I had to put, he said, put some green in the red chair and put some red in the grass around it. Not that it was visible, not that everyone said, oh, there's green grass. I mean, there's green in your chair. It just ended up making it look more three-dimensional and more jewel-like and much more interesting to do that. Um, so it, that's why I'm putting green. So you could see it's sort of making it pop more, making it much more multi-dimensional when instead of just using one flat color. And then I'm gonna, of course, use purple to blend that. But it's just deepening where the shadow is here. It's deepening and you to make lines. Use distal needles, okay? And then use your purple and blend that. So it still reads as a purple thistle, but the green gives it an interesting dimension. And when the leaves are done, it'll, it'll give it unity, another um, principle of art and design. Gives it unity, it makes it look much more natural. That's how light in nature works. It reflects off each other. So objects reflect the colors off each other. So we're trying to make this look natural. And that's why we're using green and the purple. And we'll use some purple and the green. And then you can add some light areas because that happens in nature too. You can use white. I can use this gold first. I'm doing these spikes again. That's a satisfying motion. And then use white to really get some. You don't have to press as hard. Just make sure your paper is peeled off. I'll just highlight it here and there, some light. So it's the reflection of light on some of those thistle needles. And basically my thistle is done. Does anybody have any questions thus far? And I'll close, get close up so you can see. Okay. Is that a good view? Everyone can see the thistle. There's uh, dark lights, low lights, highlights. Okay. So now it's the light leaf, beautiful shaped leaf there. That is uniquely, I guess, a thistle shaped leaf. Uh, I'm going to go with my light green to my dark green. And I hear it again, it's the shading. Why did I choose a light green here on this side? Well, it's a dark purple. I want, I want I, um, optimal contrast. So you can start with yellow. Whenever you're doing something like this, you go light to dark because you can darken these colors. It's harder to lighten them, really much harder to lighten them after you use the dark color. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill the whole thing with this yellow. What does that do? It makes you feel like you've accomplished something by filling in a lot of space and it makes the whole surface receptive to the next layer. Instead of drawing right on the raw paper, this covers all of that. It also helps organize in your mind. I'm doing the leaf, the background leaf, so just fill in the background leaf which causes negative space for you to do this leaf and you can see it clear. Mm -hmm. 
And as you hopefully are noticing, my direction is not like this, not horizontal, not vertical. It's following the curves of the leaf. It's just a good practice to get into. Even though you can't really even see this color, it's just a good practice when you're doing something organic, when you're doing a still life or whatever it is, landscape, you use the object to determine what your strokes are. You will find that you have to peel the oil pastel paper off, especially for colors you're using a lot of. Okay, so that's colored in. Not take that long. Just use a quick brushy hand motion to do it. And then my next color, I'm going to use this like olivey green, whatever green you like. Go ahead and use it, but you are going to make sure that that's lighter. I'm sort of set as the veins are sectioning off my leaf so that I know which side I'm going to be lighter and which side's going to be darker. And then do the next layer. And the same thing that you're going to do, I started with the yellow. I'm going to use that yellow to blend. I might use some white. But now I'm really defining my contours. And you'll find that if you have a nice creamy coat of yellow underneath your oil pastel, this green is going to glide right on. And it's a really satisfying feeling. the contours and then I'm ombreing it into that same motion. Now I'm just kind of seasoning that yellow side. I'm gonna use that yellow to my yellow to blend that back in with that ombre. Adding the ingredients to the side of the pot. And following the direction of the veins, the way that leaf actually is. Curvy here, so I'm doing curvy strokes. I might put one other shade here because I have it and I want that bright green. It's this, what is it called? I don't know what it's yellow green, that's what they're calling it. I'm going to brighten that a little bit here before I mix my yellow, use my, my yellow whisk. And again, when you use more than one color like this, you get more dimension. Okay, take the yellow and put it all together. Kind of with a roundish kind of whiskey motion. Pull it in so that it blends, pull it downward so it blends with what you put in. The more nervous you are doing this, the better your results, by the way, because your hand moves this around more. So this is not about being steady. It's just quick, round, whiskey, whisking motion here. And the other side's going to be darker, so I get contrast against that. And then we, before we move on to the final part, which is all 
or repetitive filling in of color for the most part. We are gonna crisp up the background a little bit. I have tape there, which is why it's making that impression. Going to highlight some areas with this white to also make it pop out more. And also helps mix it. But the main thing here is you're really kind of grinding that oil pastel into the paper. So you don't have that crayon um, coloring book texture. You want a nice greasy surface. Kind of using that white to make sure it's mixed. Okay, and then the darker side, choose a darker green. Start with the same green that you started there and then put the green, darker green on top. It gives you the blending opportunity. See how it pops out right over there. I know my vein is in the middle, so I'm sort of putting that line right there. If you like the color, this is a nice Zen kind of project. You know, just adding color in. And the shapes are created by what you've drawn. I want to leave a little bit of a light area there for contrast. So I'm going to go back with my yellow, make sure that that's nice and bright so that that pops out. Okay, now I'm going to, oh, I have to finish this section. And then we use my dark green to get some nice ombre effect over there, ombre and blending. Okay. So my dark green. Nice cross edge and then blend it. Same thing here, make that edge nice and crisp. Pressing down hard with the edge of your um, your oil pastel. There as well, all that time you get that dark, pops out against the white. Pressing down pretty hard. And pulling it in towards the stem, not the stem, the vein. Pulling it down, blending it in. It didn't take that long. The side is darker. I'll go darker here, leave that little area lighter so that I get the contrast.
and, you know, if you want to put some of this bright green, again, it's at unity because it's on that side, and it just will blend. Because it is the same leaf. It's a nice kind of way to tie it all together. And then quickly before we get to the bulbous part of the flower, all those spiky things, come, the, these spiky leaves come out. You would go back and take the dark purple that you started with. Oops. And just make your, you can do that now, or you can do it afterwards. See, it acts as an eraser. You can actually cover any kind of areas that came out by just pushing really hard. And that makes the shape nice and crisp, cleans up any stray green that came out. Which is why I love oil pastel. It's just to me a satisfying feeling to do this. That creamy feeling of the oil stick on the front of that paper. And then you would do the same thing on the light side, and then do the layer that's in front. I'm going to use this color because I have it. I'm just going to it's a nice combination of the purple and white. And crisp up my edges, or you can leave them loose like that, which is also very painterly. You don't have to have those sharp edges. If you like your edges to be kind of looser, more casual, then don't you don't necessarily have to do this. It's all personal preference, and also kind of how you work yourself. Your hand may not want to do this crisping. That's just my style, so I always end up doing that. Maybe I'm, I think I'm OCD. I like having a little bit of order, but it's nice to have it loose like this too. You know, like, a, like as if you use big brushes. Okay. So that's basically done. I might go back and kind of do these kinds of adjusting or get some more blending. And now this whole section, this is, I started with a lighter purplish color so that I had a nice transition or a nice layer of a different color between the thistle and then this green, green bulbous plant. So you can use that ochre that you started with again and lightly add that first ingredient to your bowl. Give them all that similar color. It's a nice ground color to start with. There's one here popping out. But always work back to front. It just helps organize your space, your, your composition. And then you can use the same purple, layer that on top. This also helps define it. Is a dark to separate your shapes. The darker area here. This one is surrounded by a darker shadowy area. I'm putting that in. This is green. I'm not doing that yet. Kind of drawing with color. That's basically what we're doing here. We're making our shapes clearer with color. Use your lights and blend that all together. Yeah, press it pretty hard. And this is the whisk. I'm whisking vigorously over here. Not lightly, fairly vigorously, because again, I'm using white, I could do that. And it's pulling the dark into the light and it's doing an automatic sort of ombre. Peel.
last one. I want it to overlap my pistol over here. Again, I'm adjusting my ingredients seasoning a little bit by putting some definition up here so that I have some contrast between the front of that and the background. So again, it's about layering. You're adjusting as you draw this. I'll blend that a little bit if you so want to. Same thing on this side so that that piece, that leaf just pops right out. Maybe use some gold so that I get a nice brightness over there. And that's basically done. Now I'm starting to use greens and we'll move forward. And this next level of green, it's a little different color than the one in front of it. So you can go ahead and choose kind of a duller green and then end up with your brightest greens in front of it. So it's your choice. Just make sure your shapes contrast the ones in the foreground with the ones in the background. And that's what makes this look three-dimensional in some way. It gives it a good foreground to background movement. I'm gonna actually put one of these green stemmy things here because it needs it. And I cut it off when I drew it. So I'm putting that in there. So yeah, and you can cover your oil pastel with your oil pastel. So just because I didn't put that to begin with doesn't mean I'm out of luck. I'm just gonna add it in. Next here. This is the last one that's been screen. Get that gold again, that unifying gold that I started with. I'm just going to put some of that in there before I use the yellow to mix it all together. So if you were doing another kind of composition, you can use other colors to do the same kind of thing here. Now what I'm going to do here, because this is the background of this piece of leaf here. So I'm just going to define that with that dark green that I used and make that pop out. We even use the purple, that handy purple trick that we did back there. It's the opposite now. We're using some purple to give us some definition. Just putting it through that a little bit just to add that unity. Okay, go back to that leaf here. Making that really pop by putting this yellow. And that makes it pop out. And I'm really pushing hard. Let's add that color in. And now I'm doing the same thing that I do with the level behind it, defining my lights and darks so my shapes pop out. Use purple for that again. See how that pops out when I put the purple in. Here too. Define your shapes. Drawing with color, defining your shapes with color. That's what this is. Okay. I'm going to use my brightest green for these, this row over here. I haven't used that much of it yet, that pure green. And before I do that though, I'm gonna put some of that in the leaf, the shapes behind it so that there's that unity. I don't want it to just pop out like that and come out of nowhere. So I'm just putting some of that, it's like that Kelly green. Before I go ahead and put a layer of that green there. Touches of it everywhere. 
gas so it's unity. So I do need something brighter so that that pops out. And that's why I'm using this other green. There's a lighter color right there, just because I want that contrast. And always thinking about putting contrast and then I'll mix it into that light green, into that bright green. Same thing here. I want contrast in that background. That I can take control of, and I'm going to go back to this bright green. And it actually blends it right on top of that greasy yellow that's there. And my motion turned around because this is a round shape that's kind of ovalish. So I'm making sure it's an oval motion. I'm going to use another green that I used before so that that unity, but I have the base of this bright green, which will help that pop out from the background. This is just blending it. It's all about blending with El Pastel. I'm going to use my light color as my whisk, my yellow. Make sure that pops up right there. Pushing harder so that yellow really goes into the paper. Doing this round motion again because it's a round shape. Same thing here. Try to get some contrast. Push that in there. Here as well. back to my purple so I get some of that definition and unity. I'm going to just define my shapes here again with the purple. And it's going to be in shadow anyway because this is the light's hitting it up there. This bottom part is going to be shadowy. So I'm putting some dark here for all of that. And you press hard at the bottom. That's where you want the most of it and lighten it up as you go up. So you get that ombre. Mm, that's, these green areas are mostly done. I'm going to just go back to this. And what I'll do here, which I did differently in my original, I just thought someone did something different. I'm going to pull some of this back down here. So I'm going to start with that. Again, what you do is totally up to you. But I'm going to do this poker, golden poker color, gold rod that in. This is the stem. Move that color down. And this also will give me some contrast down here. Color wise. Let me put that purple again. Then use this light mopey color and I'll blend that all together. And I'm going to put some green in there as well. I just want to get this base, the three colors I just did in. 
mixed pretty well. And again, my motion follows the shape. Hand motion. This is the only vertical because this tent is growing tall. So I'm going to do that vertical. Okay. And I want to put some green in there. So it's unity. Blend that a little bit. Same with all of them because it's all part of the same. It's a flower, it's a plant. And then because this is a cylinder, basically, it is gonna have a dark edge because it's, you know, a three-dimensional shape. So I'm gonna make sure I do that, put in the dark. So it really pops out from the background. So I use that dark green. Oh, that peachy color. Top blend it. So be in shadow here. So I'm putting that dark green over here. Drawing with color. Blending that. I'm going to use some white to get a nice highlight over here. Make it 3D. Let me just check the time. Oh, four or five. All right, so we're nearly done. I would like to take see see how everyone's doing. And if there's anybody who has questions, and I'm just going back. And this is where you do your final adjustments. And I don't expect everyone to be at this point. Obviously, you're just going to watch the video again to see, to follow along with that. Um, so I'm just making my final, making sure my contours all stand out. I'm using a dark green here to define my edges more. I'm not outlining it. I'm just contouring it because you are going to blend that in. So I will blend in that dark. So it looks like it's a three-dimensional object rather than just outline. Oh, and the veins. I did it in white in the painting. I will go ahead and do it with a dark color here. I'm using my darkest green. Going, pressing the corner of it so I get a nice sharp edge and pull it up in the direction that those veins you can do light on the other side because then you get some contrast, some light. Some more blending here. I can keep going, but this is basically done. White over here on top of this. Maybe some white here to make this pop out more. And as you're finishing up yours, we'll take a look around and see what you need to add to this. Here, I'll need a little contrast. I'll put a little white there. Put white there, make that leaf look like it's shiny. And similarly, or on the contour, on the other side, you can make things darker to give yourself some contrast in some areas. Again, using that purple so that you get the unity of color throughout and make put a nice purple area. That helps that pop out. So 
stand back and look at it, see what else you can do to make areas pop out. And that is basically your finished women's history on crystal plant. Okay. Hi everyone, this is Z from Yonkers Public Library. Thanks so much to Sally Pinto and Alexis and Barbara from NORC. Thank you to our community partners, WJCS, the City of Yonkers Office for the Aging, Westchester County Legislator Ruth Walter, Friends of Crestwood Library, and Yonkers Public Library for making this phenomenal partnership. And we thank each and every one of you for being part of our wellness community. Be well, stay well.